Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to start our exploration of Mixed Strategy Nash Equilibrium by talking about the game Matching Pennies. And I cover this in Lesson 1.5 of my textbook, Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. Here's the game, Matching Pennies. You and a friend are simultaneously going to reveal a penny. If both pennies show heads or both show tails, essentially if they match, your friend has to pay you $1. But if one penny shows heads and the other shows tails, essentially if they mismatch, you have to pay your friend $1. So you're choosing which side you want to have showing facing up, and then both of you are revealing that, and based off of what both of those pennies say, you're either paying a dollar to your friend or your friend's paying you a dollar. So the payoff matrix looks like this, where if you are matching, so if you get heads and heads, then you win a dollar, your friend loses a dollar. And that's the same thing down here if they're both tails. Meanwhile, if they mismatch, if one is heads and the other one is tails, then you lose a dollar, she gains a dollar. And if you're showing heads, she's showing tails, same story. Now, a lot of games are like this. This is a diametrically opposed game. It's a zero-sum game because each of these is adding up to zero. One plus negative one adds up to zero, and the same all, all the way through. So you and your friend have diametrically opposed interests here. Again, like I said, this is a very common sort of strategic situation. For example, in a game of soccer, penalty kicks, you have a striker trying to score a goal, and you have a goalie trying to stop that goal from being scored. The striker wants to kick in the direction that the goalie is not kicking in, and the goalie wants to guess correctly. So if the goalie is diving left and the striker is kicking left, he's happy. If they're both going right, the goalie is happy. But if they're mismatching, then the striker is happy. So this applies to all sorts of situations, especially in sports where there are diametrically opposed uh, situations and preferences among the players. So this is a really common sort of game. It'd be really awesome if we could solve it. However, we're going to see that this is not so obvious to solve. Why is that? Well, there aren't going to be any pure strategy Nash equilibria. Let's go through each of these different cases and see why that's the case. So can heads heads be a Nash equilibrium? The answer is no. Why is that? Well, consider player two's deviation. If player two knows that player one is playing heads, she doesn't want to play heads. She's going to want to switch over to tails. So this can't be a Nash equilibrium. Well, can heads tails be a Nash equilibrium? No, this time for the opposite reason. Now player one would want to switch his strategy because if he knows that player two is going to select tails, then he's going to want to select tails as well and make sure that he gets the match. But this can't be a Nash equilibrium either because now player two wants to switch her strategy. If she knows that player one is going to choose tails, she wants to choose heads. And this can't be a Nash equilibrium because if player one knows that player two is playing heads, he's going to want to switch from tails to heads. So we have no pure strategy Nash equilibria here. This means that we're in a bit of trouble, given what we know already. However, there's a different type of Nash equilibrium that we can find in this game, and this is actually compelling for this sort of situation. It's called a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So Nash's theorem, we get uh, this, this name Nash equilibrium comes from this guy named John Nash. Perhaps you know him from A Beautiful Mind. He has this theorem, which really started the whole game theory revolution, and he basically said that there must be at least one Nash equilibrium for all finite games. A finite game simply has a finite number of players and a finite number of strategies. Here we have two players and two strategies for each player, so that means this is a finite game, so there has to be a Nash equilibrium here. We know that there aren't any impure strategies, we just look through that, but there's this other type of, of, of equilibrium that I was talking to you about. It's called mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So if no equilibrium exists in pure strategies, one must exist in mixed strategies. That came from Nash's theorem. And a mixed strategy is simply just a probability distribution over two or more pure strategies. So that is, the players are going to choose randomly among their options in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. If these mixtures are mutual best responses in the same way that we've defined in the previous video, then the set of strategies is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So to think about this in terms of the matching pennies example, suppose you were playing matching pennies against a mind reader. I want you to pause for a moment here and think about how you could avoid losing in this situation. Suppose your opponent was a mind reader and he knew exactly what you would be picking. If you were looking at your penny and trying to decide, should I choose heads or tails, your mind reader opponent is going to be able to visualize that and know what you're choosing. How can you avoid losing in this situation? Well, the answer is to simply flip the coin. At best, the mind reader could only win half the time. And in fact, if the mind reader is also flipping the coin, then there's nothing that you could do to beat him either. Right? If both of you are flipping your coins, then in every single case, your expectation is that you'll win half the time and lose half the time. So for example, if player two is mixing 
is randomizing with probability uh, 0.5 or essentially half the time on heads and half the time on tails, then it doesn't matter whether you choose heads because if you choose heads, you're gonna win half the time and you're gonna lose half the time. And if you choose tails, you're gonna lose half the time and win half the time. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't change your outcome. You're just as happy to flip your coin. Similarly, if you're flipping your coin, then your opponent, player two, can't do anything against you to make sure that she's going to win. She's a stuck winning half the time and stuck losing half the time. She can't do anything to change that. If she plays heads and you're flipping your coin, then she's losing half the time and winning half the time. If she plays tails and you're flipping your coin, then she's winning half the time and losing half the time. She can't change anything. So if both of you are flipping, you're in a situation where neither of you can change your strategies and expect to do better. And so that meets this definition of a mutual best response. Your opponent, player two, is best responding to what you're doing because she can't win, she can't lose, she might as well flip her coin. That's a best response. And if she's flipping her coin, well, you can't win, you can't lose. The best you can do is flip, well, the best you can do is anything. You might as well flip your coin. And so that creates a situation where both of you are indifferent between changing your strategies. Neither one of you can gain by changing your strategies. And so that's a Nash equilibrium. However, we can't usually just guess this coin flipping strategy. It's not that easy. So if I change these strategies around a little bit, if I weighted the results so that if the, the coins matched on heads, then you would win $3 and your friend would lose $3. If they matched on tails, there was no difference. If they had a mismatch where you had heads and she had tails, then you lose two and she gains two. And if they mismatched and you have tails and she has heads, then you lose one and she gains one. You can't just simply look at this payoff matrix very easily and decide, well, if I flip my coin, everything's going to be fine. In this particular case, that's not fine. Your opponent would actually want to strategize against you if she were, if she knew that you were flipping the coin. And so what we need to do is develop a way of solving for this sort of situation more generally. And what we need to do that is something called the mixed strategy algorithm, which we get to in the next video. So for the next few videos, we'll be talking about pure, or not pure strategy, Nash equilibrium, mixed strategy, Nash equilibrium, and a lot of depth. So join me in the next video when we introduce this algorithm, which we'll be using all the time in the future to solve for mixed strategy, Nash equilibrium. Talk to you then. Bye.